In most minds, the Florida Keys conjure up images of an archipelago, a group of islands scattered westerly from the southern tip of the United States. They would not be wrong. But for those who live in the Florida Keys, it is obvious. The Keys are all about the water surrounding these islands. The crystal clear waters and vibrant marine ecosystems attract visitors from around the world, and many have relocated to the Florida Keys because of this beautiful natural environment. Well, when we first uh, bought our property in 07, uh, I noticed there were quite a few days of the year where we couldn't go out and enjoy our porch because of the smell was so bad. And uh, the harbor was turning brown, and there were several days it was covered with weeds. That sea tree was terrible. I mean, it would just come in there and sit for a week, 10 days sometimes, and just accumulate so thick that literally, I mean, it, it, it probably was a foot thick sitting down there because like we would watch our our neighbors try to get out in their boat and it would just stall the boat they couldn't even get out through it it was so bad the desire to live in the florida keys especially on the water increased throughout the decades as more people wanted their little piece of paradise particularly in the 1950s and 1960s when property developers responded to the demand by dredging and filling land to create subdivisions and canals throughout monroe county many years ago Canals were dug with a growing interest in moving to the Florida Keys without any research into the environmental impact that canals would have in the future. It was construction that took place to uh, provide fill for the subdivisions that were built in the Keys without any regard to orientation of the canals uh, with the east to west and north to south winds that drove uh, the weed rack into the canals and without any tidal flushing, uh, eventually the dissolved oxygen was depleted within the canals as they degraded, uh, affecting the, uh, the water quality within these canals. In all, over 170 miles of canals exist in the Florida Keys. Isla Morada, Village of Islands, is a municipality within Monroe County that comprises four islands, Plantation Key, Windley Key, Upper Matacumbe, and Lower Matacumbe Key. Within Isla Morada, there are approximately 24 miles of canals. As with most of the canal systems in Monroe County, one of the major problems are the way they were constructed did not allow for water circulation. When there is no flushing of the system, seaweed accumulates, sinks to the bottom, and decomposes. This process depletes oxygen from the water, killing sea life and causing a myriad of environmental issues. In 1999, uh, State Representative Ken Sorensen introduced legislation uh, referred to as 99395, which requires all residents and all businesses uh, to achieve advanced wastewater treatment. So this was the beginning step in addressing the problems that we were experiencing uh, from septic tanks and sewage and the runoff that went into the canals and was not tidally flushed. Through the last two decades, many successes were achieved upgrading wastewater treatment in the Florida Keys, thus eliminating one of the main sources for pollution in near shore and canal waters. But even with human-sourced pollution managed or eliminated, the canals were still not healthy. Summertime easterly, southeasterly winds would bring in the seaweed and unfortunately there was no way to stop that and what would happen is it would go down to the end of the harbor and sit there for a few days and eventually sink to the bottom which would deteriorate the oxygen quality of the water and again less fish and more of that sulfur smell. Even with the ongoing stormwater and wastewater improvements throughout the county, something needed to be done to further clean our canal systems. I went and requested of my colleagues, my county commissioners, uh, to provide revenue to do demonstration projects using different technologies which will address uh, the problems that we are experiencing within these canals and hopefully we will be able to provide the necessary data and information as to where the residents and the county and the municipalities can partner in correcting this ongoing long time problem. The county did a 
2012 canal management master plan that identified over 300 impacted canals throughout the Keys, meaning that they had turbidity issues, low dissolved oxygen, seaweed issues. Part of the demonstration project was ranking all of the village's canals, and there were 10 that were ranked poor, which meaning the worst of the worst, the most turbid, the most low oxygen. So as we mentioned, the Treasure Harbor was picked as number one. Isla Mirada's demonstration project, particularly the first demonstration project, Treasure Harbor, is an important part of that effort. What we found when we looked specifically at canals such as Treasure Harbor, you really may need a combination. And Treasure Harbor was selected as the top choice for Amarada because they, it was a unique combination of enhancing an existing aerator system that although had done improvement, still did not meet water quality standards. So not only are we preventing seaweed from coming in and using that technology, we are now looking at an enhanced aerator system. So that combination uh, was very, very, uh, will very much help the overall demonstration program. Another reason Treasure Harbor was selected was because of the support of the Homeowners Association. Without local support, these programs do not work. With limited local support, there can be limited success. But with knowledgeable and ample support, there can be definite improvement in our canal waters. The people of Isla Morada and the leaders on the village council have led the way. Their efforts to determine which technology can help clean our canals will help the entire Florida Keys community. In November 2014, the first weed barrier demonstration project was installed on Plantation Key in Treasure Harbor. This project was unique throughout the county because in addition to the weed barrier, the homeowners and the canal restoration subcommittee approved enhancing an existing technology within the canal area, aeration. All of the initial demonstration projects will include three years of monitoring before, during, and after installation. Therefore, by enhancing an already functioning system, Treasure Harbor will allow researchers to analyze data and help determine if the enhancement of aeration will affect water quality for future projects. The installation for both the weed barrier and the additional aeration systems began with mounting the additional cabinets on a solid base. These cabinets house four compressors each. Two cabinets are dedicated for the weed barrier and one for the additional aeration. Now that the compressors are ready, the weed barrier at the entrance of the canal was the next to be installed. In compliance with permitting, a turbidity screen was set in place and must remain in place during the entire installation. The bottom line tubing that will feed air from the compressors to the entrance of the canal is gathered and distributed to waiting boats. The tubing is weighted and is set carefully from the boats to the entrance of the canal. Once the tubing is laid out, the valves that will regulate the air to the weed barrier are installed. The weed barrier will generate a curtain of bubbles at the entrance using Teflon-coated membrane discs mounted on weighted frames. These heavy frames are carefully located on the bottom by a diver in the previously marked locations. The placement of the frames is critical to ensure the depth is correct and no interference will occur with boat traffic. This curtain of bubbles will ensure mats of floating seaweed will not enter the canal. Now that the air and the tubing are complete, the loose piping will be gathered together and secured to each frame so there is no entanglement in the future. The recent installation has been a great success and they will next move on to the final installation of the additional aeration systems. The additional aeration frames to be installed contain five Teflon aeration discs and are weighted using pea gravel secured in the base of the unit. The weighted tubing is then run from the compressors to predetermined locations to maximize the aeration within the canal. The entire unit with the weighted base is lowered into the canal and guided to the bottom. Once on the bottom, the unit is turned on and we have air. We hope that the data collected from this project will help to determine if the enhancement of aeration will affect water quality in all future projects. When you look at anything affecting the environment, rarely does it only affect one closed-in area. There's always an effect 
somewhere else. So, um, you know, that necessitates working with other municipalities. And even if we didn't benefit directly financially here and, and money went to a different area of Monroe County, ultimately, just because of how nature is set up, we would benefit. So we have to support efforts in other areas as well. Well, we're one big family and we're connected by bridges and, and we need to find out what the methodology is best used for the canals and by doing all these different canal restoration projects, uh, we'll find out what, what best suits each and every one of our canals. To realize that there's technology and there's science that can do something like clean a canal, I think is um, it's very refreshing and, and hopeful for the future. There are five cleanup methods being demonstrated through these projects throughout the Keys. One, culverts. Two, backfilling. Three, weed barriers. Four, organic removal. And five, pumping. Monroe County approved $5 million to implement at least one of each of these technologies in unincorporated areas, and Isla Morada approved $100,000 to begin a demonstration project in the village. Weed barrier technology was selected as the first project due to the current funding available by the village council. Weed barriers are designed to block noxious floating seaweed from entering into a canal or basin. But technology alone will not solve the problem. The second huge component of the demonstration projects is how can we most efficiently implement them. It's a large, large amount of residential private property in this community. And in order to get these systems efficiently installed, you need homeowner participation. You need to determine the best group, the best method, how to get these people together, how to most efficiently get them installed. The residents are, are aware of, of many of the problems. We want to bring more of the people into that recognition that we've got some issues here that we can solve and resolve if we'll work together in this project by providing state funding, federal funding, and local funding, and participations from our residents. It's a community effort, and if uh, other neighborhoods um, want to enjoy what we hope to enjoy, and which we are already enjoying in cleaner water, get your group together and head to your local uh, village of Isla Mirada or Monroe County and, and talk with them, because we could not have accomplished this without all of the funding that's being put into it. Uh, we have responsibilities towards um, uh, paying for the upkeep of, of uh, the electricity and so forth, but we could never have enjoyed this without the government's help um, that we've received. We feel pretty privileged to, uh, to have it. Water quality is our lifeblood throughout this county. Uh, our uh, marine resources within the water quality uh, column are, are very important to the property values through, throughout the Keys and we have some of the highest property values in the state of Florida, if not the highest. And one of the things that we have to do is protect those property values. We don't inherit the planet from our parents. We borrow it from our children. When deciding on funding a project like this canal restoration project, this is important to remember. After all the trials and tribulations and sweat and toil, and after all the work is done, the gratitude will be much easier to accept than accusations of idleness. I would tell any homeowners association that they, need to, they do need to organize and they need to come forward to the council and say, we want to partner with you, we, 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 want, to get, we want to get involved in this, and this is what we're bringing to the table. So if we can get people like that and homeowner associations like that, then it's a lot easier for the council to decide to allocate those funds. For more information about the amazing work being done in Isla Morada, please contact Isla Morada at 305-664-6427.